On my left here, I have Christine Murray, and on my right, Cathy Sinclair, both long-standing members of the club. So ladies, uh, we'll kick off. How old were you when you started playing golf? <coughs> Cathy? Oh, as soon as I could hold a club, I said, <laughs> <laughs> I got three cast off. It was wooden clubs, of course, we yeah. had cast offs my brothers kept doing for me. I went out to the low course and did my best. <laughs> well, I started when I was nine years old, because that was the year that parents moved into the golf club. And I was very lucky, Danny McCulloch, gave me, who was the pro at the time, yes. gave me some brand new junior sized clubs that uh, I used a bit. And tuition? Well, probably from my father, yes. yes. Mm -hmm. but, uh, mm -hmm. There was no other girls of my age That's playing great. at the time, none of my classmates, okay. but there were some girls later on, but okay. not to begin with. So did you play against the, the youth, the, the boys? No, no, not at all, no. no. I don't think the boys would be in favour of that at the time. Okay, well, I caddied for a couple of years anyway, from about the ages of 11 to 13. And uh, that was not long after the course was reconstructed. And I remember caddying for some of the visitors, and they had been coming here for many years, and they quite liked to play the old course and not go on the new holes from the 7th, yep. the 11th, or turn at mm -hmm. the 6th and come back here to the, well, what is now the 18th. And then they would like to perhaps play the burn holes as well. Good but that was just at, at the beginning of the reconstruction. But after, from about the age of 13, I was probably helping my mother in the golf club because she was responsible for the catering while my father was caretaker. Yes. That was the term used then, okay. the caretaker, he was employed. At that time, there would only be lunches on tournament days and high teas. Again, a meal that's not very yes. much used now would be served for inter-club matches. And afternoon teas then involved well, mm. <laughs> many, many plates of uh, yes. sandwiches, scones, mm. pancakes, cakes, home mm. baking. So that was really quite busy. Mm -hmm. uh, I think the license came about 1948 or 49, and that uh, did make a difference. You were well, we caddied in some as soon way. as the school holidays came. We all got down to the club, and if Sandy Matheson was caddy master then. He'd a wee hat. It would be where the car park is now, and the railing from the tennis court came right up to his hat. And we got a little brass number, and we queued up, mm -hmm. and we just the golfers came in. It was the same folk nearly every year, wasn't yes, it? Yes, regular Remember? visitors. Yes, same. Mm -hmm. And you got, you got a ticket, which you cashed in on a Saturday, and you had a tip. Uh, Threepence we call scrabbies. <laughs> <laughs> they weren't popular. <laughs> and there was a lot of embo caddies in these days. And uh, they used to say sixpence was sheer skillig. That was the garlic for sixpence. Right. And if you got a shilling, oh, you were over the moon for that. <laughs> well, it was good in many ways, but you were out. 18 holes with a big bag, mm -hmm. twice a day, even on games day, which we did. <laughs> but, um, Restrictions as to where and when you could play? Well, men weren't too bad, they were. <laughs> they were well, there's worse than some clubs, I mean. Well, I think so. <laughs> there was no restrictions when I started no. playing. I joined the, well, when I was 16, I was able to play with the ladies in the ladies section. And there's no restrictions no. at all about where or when. But no Sunday golf, of course, no. No. until 19, uh, 1963. I think yeah. some of the, when the NATO fleet used to come into Inver Gordon, some of the officers came and had a game on a Sunday, but somebody spotted them. <laughs> <laughs> yes, so that's right. right. <laughs> So that stopped that. Yes, yeah, so <laughs> the <laughs> ministry wouldn't have done that. Of course not. <laughs> and the open tournament, one one day, uh, one round. But Cathy, you remember earlier, I think the ladies' open would be a knockout format, yes, wasn't it? Uh -huh. 
It used to be, yes. Mm -hmm. It was about qualifying round, didn't uh -huh. you? Yeah. And then you just not to be over mm -hmm. three days, was it? Yes, it went on for a bit of time. Three consecutive days. Well, so so mm -hmm. I believe, but not <coughs> after when I was involved. John Sutherland was quite a. <laughs> you wouldn't dare walk on a green if John was in charge of the competition. You had to go right round him. He fairly taught you how to respect your course. Because it wasn't a full-time post, a secretary. And they always had other uh, jobs mm -hmm. until, I think, mm -hmm. sometime in the 1970s. Would be, I think Ken Murray was the first appointed um, full-time secretary. Now, Duncan, your brother, he was employed in the course for all his life, apart from all the war years. All his life, apart from using artillery during the war. Apart from that was his life, yeah. It was over 50 years, I think. I can't remember the exact number, but he, his whole life was spent on the golf course. Yeah. Mm -hmm. And then you go out and play at night yes, after working oh, yeah. all day on the course. Very well, you know, golfer. You, yes, Dad, and himself, good, yes. they used to be, mm. on the, well, he'd be on the course at five in the morning, and your dad mm. would be baking, and That's they'd right. be out on that Carnegie Shield. First tea, no yeah. bother no. to them. No. Mm -hmm. They'll be going around in two and a half hours too. Yes, yeah, that's right. right. <laughs> <laughs> that's something that's changed. <laughs> yes. Through television <laughs> coverage, you said. That's changed for the worse, hasn't it? <laughs> yes, my father yeah. uh, uh, was a caddy here himself, in John Sutherland's time, of course. And uh, so were his brothers, three brothers. And these, they all went. The three brothers went to the States as golf professionals. And uh, so the family was always very interested mm -hmm. in golf. And did they come back frequently? In not frequently, not in these no. times. No. They went, two of them <coughs> emigrated before the First World War, and one just after, uh, about 1919. So they came back just very infrequently because but one of the older ones came more often once they could travel by air. But otherwise it was distant. Mm -hmm. My parents were here for nearly 19 years, and uh, father, I was about 196, my mother died, actually died here in 1963, and they were due to retire just a few months later anyway. I know it was. Um, they were replaced by Jack Fimister. Oh, yeah. And he was here for a few years. Yes. He was a retired... Retired sea captain, mm -hmm. wasn't he? Yeah. Yeah. Master yeah. Mariner. That's, yeah. that's right. So, uh, yes. His father had been uh, head, headmaster in Embo. Mm -hmm. So he had been brought up in the area. Yeah. Yes. That's not a very north of Scotland name for Mister. No, I think no. it's it Sh Shetland. I th or Arcadia, maybe. <coughs> the club had very hard times financially, uh, even well, especially just after the war, <coughs> and then still even in the 50s and 60s, uh, they didn't have a lot of money, and uh, they were always fundraising through bazaars and trying to get as much generated mm -hmm. as they could. But they needed a lot too in these days, hadn't yes, they? Making yes. money for the care. Mm -hmm. Felt like a sale of work. Yes. Yes. Mm -hmm. My father actually, though he was working in the golf club during the season, he had to work on the course in the winter because, again, there weren't many people golfing and wasn't busy at the clubhouse in the winter. So he went out on the golf course mm -hmm. <coughs> from about. I remember the clubhouse clock, one large clock on the roof, had to be wound every week. And uh, my father would climb up into the loft every Sunday and wind the clock. It was a very good timekeeper for many years. And it can now can be seen in the museum, in the history links. Just after we arrived here, <coughs> the RAF and the army still were occupying some of the rooms in the clubhouse because they had been requisitioned during the war. 
<clears throat> and one of my earliest memories too is seeing the bonfire to celebrate VE Day being lit down on the links just near the 16th green. There was a big bonfire. Mm -hmm. and celebrations then. Yes. Yeah.